welcome to the show with the eternal self Every bit's a banger, best believe he don't mess Do me a favor, drop us up and keep tuning in If you like what you see, go and share with your friends Alright guys, it's here I can't believe it, but what an episode what an episode i have to say i truly enjoyed this one and it finally answered a lot of questions that we all have been wondering for a long long time but also left us with a big cliffhanger now let's get into the breakdown of the episode and the dive in to it as well so we start off the episode where we left off in episode three with the ship down and we see Huang fixing it and we see Ahsoka leave the ship as she starts sensing some things and ends up telling Sabine if they can't make it to find Ezra then no one should and we hear Sabine then say it won't come to that and Ahsoka says it might have as it's probably best if he stays where he is since if they find Thrawn he might become into the heir to the Empire which is something they definitely don't want, obviously. It then turns to Shin updating Morgan and Balin how they found and located Ahsoka Starship as they get ready to take on Ahsoka and Sabine and Huang. So Balin sends the assassin droids along with Merrick and Shin to delay them as they are getting ready and gathering the coordinates for the return of Thrawn with the star map in order to go and jump into hyperspace. So then it leads up into the scene where we get Huang fighting the assassin droids as Ahsoka senses some danger since Huang shut off the ship since he was already fixing it and the fight breaks out as we see Shin going up against Sabine and Ahsoka going up against Merrick which we already had seen this in the trailer. Now this one took me and I'm sure everybody by surprise because it ends up being that we see Marek go up against Ahsoka but out of nowhere Ahsoka slices down Marek and he ends up turning into the green magic that we have seen before a lot of the Dathomirian night sisters and brothers turn into once they do die which we saw Savage it happened to as well. And we also see this in kind of like the Avengers Infinity War when they turn into dust. But we get to finally lay to rest the whole time. Everybody has been thinking it was Starkiller, Ezra, or any other big theory that you could think of lingering out there. It finally got laid to rest. And this time we saw Sabine fighting Shin and it seemed very evenly matched. Even though as we did see Sabine shooting her blasters at Shin, it really mirrored, for me at least, when Jango Fett was blasting Mace Windu and one can only think Shin is a little bit more advanced even though they were a little bit evenly matched than Sabine Wren and you know I think she could have probably sliced her up the same way Mace Windu sliced up Jango Fett but I, I know they're setting up for something bigger with Sabine and we finally got to see this rumor get debunked or at least laid to rest for now for now we saw Sabine on the ground against Shin still and it ends up being that she puts her hand out and we see her trying to use the force to kind of like force push her and Shin kind of like flinches a little bit and then tells her you have no powers and this is something that we did see in the trailer and right after she utilizes her Mandalorian gadgets and her armor as well the way we saw her use it in Star Wars Rebels and this actually made me really happy because she doesn't have to necessarily be force sensitive to wield the lightsaber and I like this I like that they're keeping her true to her Mandalorian self now right after once Ahsoka did defeat Marek Ahsoka ran to destroy the star map which can locate Thrawn which we know about but she ran into of course Balin as they did start fighting of course Anakin comes up the same way we had heard in the trailer and as Ahsoka is fighting Balin there's a moment that she kicks him to the ground and she ends up getting the star map but it ends up burning out of her hand and you kind of hear like a little bit of rumble and thunder which we'll get back to why I mentioned this part right after or later on in the video I'll talk about it as it leads something that comes to the end. Now as Ahsoka is injured with her hand Shin escapes as well fighting Sabine and basically they both escape and when we see Balin, he is overpowering Ahsoka because, again, Ahsoka ended up burning her hand from the star map. We then see Sabine grabbing the star map and Ahsoka tells her to destroy it, but Balin knocks Ahsoka off the cliff and Sabine yells in 
basically like, no, like, how could you? And Balin then turns off his lightsaber and starts to close his eyes as he reads Sabine's feelings and mind and manipulates her by telling her that as Ezra Bridger is the only family that she does have left and promises Sabine that if, you know, he can give her that star map, he will bring Ezra to her and bring her to Ezra, shall I say. And this time we see her a little conflicted about her decision as Ahsoka is no longer in the picture right now and ends up giving Balin the star map as she believes that he will bring her to Ezra. Now it's funny because you see Shin force choking Sabine right after and Balin tells her to stop as he says he gave Sabine his word unlike her friend meaning Ahsoka. And then we see Hera and the Republic arrive with Carson Tiva, actually, which is something we called in the video the other day, and making his appearance as well, yes, Mando himself, aka Brendan Wayne, which is the stunt actor who does play Mando. We do hear Hera call, yes, Huang, to get the update on what's going on, and he does inform her that they built a hyperspace ring to not let them escape, and Balin destroys the star map in order for nobody to follow them, which we see them arrive to the hyperspace ring and Hera and the rest of the crew chase them but it ends up being that Morgan, Elsbeth and the rest of them end up going into hyperspace and escape which right after we see and look at Hera's face of weary in her eyes and the way that she gives her facial expression. Also we see Jason Sindula and he says he's got a bad feeling about this, which you know that's indicating something, but that's for a later video, and also taking some homage towards Han Solo. So now, it comes to the end, being that after Balin made Ahsoka fall off the cliff, it appears she landed not just in anywhere, she landed in the world between worlds, guys. What we have been teased, rumored, everything you could think of, it is true. She lands in the world between worlds and it's finally confirmed. And as she's waking up with confusion, which I'm sure she does know where she is at this point, but she's wondering how she got there. But she does hear a faint voice saying her name and she says the words, Master. And you hear the words, didn't expect to see you soon. As she turns around, it ends up being the one, the only, Anakin Skywalker. And as it ends, they look at each other. She smiles, but her smile starts changing into kind of like a worried some look as she definitely senses something is different or off about him. And as the scene ends, it ends up playing the same score they played in Revenge of the Sith when Anakin embraces and becomes Darth Vader, Lord Vader, by Palpatine himself. I have to say, this episode had a lot of interesting things that I did enjoy and I will be doing some theory videos for the next couple of days on everything that we got for episode 4. But comment down below let me know what you thought of this episode and what you rated from a 1 to 10 as I rated it a 9. This is the Eternal Sith. Catch you in the comment section.